Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. If you're struggling with tennis elbow, I'm gonna try and help you with that in this video. It's something that I used to deal with in the past myself. I know how frustrating it can be. It can be a little bit tricky to work with. And the reason that that is, is because there's potentially a lot of different underlying causes. So obviously we can't go over everything in this video, but we're gonna be working on one really important area, and that's gonna be strength. So I'm gonna be showing you a series of strength exercises to work on a couple of different parts of your arm that are gonna be really helpful for helping you to get rid of tennis elbow if you're currently struggling with it, or you can really use these exercises to help bulletproof and reduce the likelihood that you'll get tennis elbow. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. So we're gonna be working on strength exercises, but I just wanna start by giving you a little bit of context so you understand why it can be beneficial. Because like I said at the start, there can be multiple different underlying causes of tennis elbow pain. And the reason for that is that pain is a protective mechanism created by your brain in response to perceived danger. Most people think that we only get pain when something is damaged. So when they get pain on the outside of the elbow, tennis elbow, they tend to think it's something to do with the muscle or the tendon, or maybe the area might be inflamed and sometimes that's the case but it's also possible to experience a lot of pain in a part of the body without any specific tissue damage or structural injury whatsoever and the research is very clear if you want to dig deeper into that i'll place a link to a lecture by one of the top um, pain scientists in the world professor Lorimer mosley so you can check that out but here i'm going to keep it much more simple and just kind of explain that it doesn't have to be an injury. There can be a lot of potential reasons your brain might want to protect you, like one of the nerves isn't doing its job properly. Maybe the muscle or the nerve that goes to the muscles on the back of the arm, the triceps, maybe that's a little bit sticky to surrounding tissues. That could be potentially a reason your brain will want to create pain. Or maybe the joints in the hand aren't moving properly, so when you're hitting the ball, they're not sending good information back to your brain, and potentially your brain could want to create pain to protect you against that. So there's lots of potential reasons, but one of the big ones is going to be lack of strength, because your brain's smart. When you're playing tennis, there's a lot of forces going on, if your muscles aren't strong enough to keep you safe, there is a risk of an actual injury happening and your brain doesn't want that to happen, so it can try and give you pain ahead of time to prevent something bad from going on. So often by strengthening things in the right way, we can get rid of existing elbow pain and we can really help to bulletproof our bodies against future issues. The first area that we're gonna work on strengthening is gonna be the forearm. Now this is an area that often gets neglected, but it can be really important for tennis elbow. Your wrists have to take a lot of punishment when you're playing. So if you think about hitting a forehand, if you think about the contact point, the position of the wrist that that's in, that can place a lot of stress on the muscles on this side of the arm. And these muscles, they either attach in the fingers or they attach in the hands and they attach on the other side of the elbow. So they cross all of this area, including the elbow. And if we're thinking about the muscles on the back of the arm, when we're hitting backhands and backhand volleys and dealing with shots like that, then these muscles also attach on the fingers, the hand, and above the elbow. So lack of strength in muscles on either side of the forearm can be a major driver for tennis elbow pain. And this is one of the ones that I had to deal with in the past before I was able to resolve my issues. So I'm gonna show you some simple strengthening exercises that we can do. And we're gonna be doing them from um, some funny positions. We're basically gonna be trying to work on our strength in our stretched out position. Because if I'm making contact on that forehand, we kind of need to have strengthened the muscles at this angle. So the way that you'll do that is you'll go on all fours, uh, or you could do this sitting at a table, and I'm basically gonna put my weight on my hands. So in this position, I've got a big stretch on the back of the forearm. And then what you're gonna be doing from there is basically doing strength exercises in this position. So strengthening this end range of motion. There's a couple of different ways that I can do it, but the most basic one is just to push into the ground without moving. So what I'm trying to do is trying to push my hands into the ground, which is gonna strengthen the muscles on this wrist or on this forearm. I'm not gonna go anywhere because my body weight is over the top. So I'm squeezing into the mat with my forearms, but without moving anywhere. I can also squeeze with my fingers because these muscles go all the way. So I'm now squeezing with my fingers and I'm pushing with my forearms. And if you do this, you'll feel a buildup of tension in the muscles in your forearm. 
And that's basically the way that you're gonna work on this exercise. You could also push yourself away to work on in that way, but I personally like to do a static hold where I'm trying to push away and squeeze with my fingers like so. When you first do this, you need to be careful. You might not be able to use much force at all, but this is something that you're gonna to wanna to work on to increase the length and how hard you can actually squeeze these muscles. So maybe starting out with around five to 10 seconds, just done gently, but then building it up and being able to maintain a good contraction for 30 seconds, really squeezing hard is gonna be a target to go for. So the way I like to train these, I like to do you know, 30, 40 seconds of a good hard squeeze as one set, but then do several different positions. So I'll do this position here, where I'm pushing in and squeezing away and I'm doing that. But then I like to rest, rotate my hands. So now, again, this feels like a really funny position. I've got my elbow straight. I'm gonna be squeezing my hands and my fingers into the floor, strengthening these muscles, but from having my forearms in a different position. So we're strengthening in a slightly different way. Again, work on one good hard set will be enough. I can then turn my forearms so they're facing the other way. And again, I'm pushing into the ground. I'm squeezing with my fingers, starting out small and then building up the strength and the, the endurance over time. And then you can also do the final variation. So we've got four different positions, fingers pointing forwards, fingers pointing out, fingers pointing in, and then fingers pointing back. So I do four sets, four different positions to really strengthen these muscles. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the muscles on the back of the forearm. So this time, instead of being like this, we're gonna be like this in some variation. And what you'll find when you do this is this is gonna be a lot more tender. So you need to go very gently, especially if you've got tennis elbow. I want you to be able to do this without triggering the pain. If you can't, you're then just gonna focus on doing it on the other arm and work on everything else that I'm showing you. And maybe check out the web class that's gonna be down in the description where I go into some of the work on the nerves and other things. So only do the one that you can without pain, but providing you can do it without pain, I'm gonna rest my hands in this position. I'm gonna keep my elbows straight. And now I'm thinking about doing this. So pushing into the ground. Again, I could push myself away, but I'm gonna keep my body still and I'm just gonna build up the tension, trying to push my hand into the back of the ground. Again, you'll start off slowly and gently because it can be a little bit tender at first, but over time, build up the quality of the contraction and the length of the contraction. And again, I'm gonna do multiple different positions. So I've got my palms facing in, I've got my palms facing back, my palms facing forwards, and if you've got the flexibility to happen, so I can have my fingers pointing outwards like so, and I can strengthen these muscles in all those different positions. So that's the first set of exercises, working on forearm strength. Here, I'm demonstrating with both hands. Obviously, I could do one hand at a time, but what you're thinking about is working up to 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds per set, rest for a minute, repeat that three or four times in those different positions, and then do the same thing for the other side of the forearm. Again, 30 to 40 seconds, three or four sets, those different positions, and that's gonna be a really solid little program to strengthen your forearms, and it can be really beneficial for tennis elbow. Now we're gonna do some strengthening for the back of the shoulders, for the external rotators, which twist your arm out, and for the scapular retractors, which pull the shoulder blade back. Both of these muscles or sets of muscles are gonna be really important for decelerating your shots, for slowing your arm down on your forehand and on your serve, because on both of those motions, I've got a lot of internal rotation going on and I've got a lot of forwards movement from the shoulder blade. So the muscles at the back need to be strong to slow the movement down. If they lack strength, it can be a major reason for your brain to want to create pain in your elbow, and it can cause your brain to try and use the muscles in the forearm and the elbow to do the job that the muscles on the back of the shoulder have been doing. So strengthening these can be a really, really important piece of the puzzle for getting rid of tennis elbow. We're gonna work on an exercise for the external rotators and we're gonna work on an exercise for the scapular retractors. But I'm gonna show you two different variations, one using weights and one using bands. Firstly, so that you've got options and secondly, so that depending on what equipment you've got, you can still do these important exercises. So we're gonna start with the bands. You could also use cables 
for these exercises at the gym. That's personally what I prefer to do these exercises with because cables allow me to monitor how much weight I'm lifting. We can do a great job with bands. Um, we can use different levels of thickness of band to increase the difficulty. It's just a little bit harder to track. Now, again, as a reminder, if this hurts your elbow, you're not gonna do it. You're only gonna do things that you can do without pain because causing pain doesn't convince your brain to forget about the reason to protect you. So if you're a right-handed player, you've currently got pain on your right elbow and it hurts when you do this, just work on the left elbow and the drills that you can until things stop hurting. So really simple exercise though. I'm gonna hold the band, I'm gonna be taking it outwards and then lowering it back inwards a little bit more slowly. So it's gonna be about one second on the way out and then about four or five seconds on the way back in. And the reason that I'm lowering the weight slowly is because we want to make our muscles strong as they lengthen because that's how we decelerate things. So quick on the way out, slow on the way in, holding nice tall posture all the way through the exercise. And I'm gonna be trying to choose a weight that's challenging for between kind of eight and 12 repetitions at that speed. And doing three to four sets is gonna be great. So, you know, eight to 12 reps at whatever resistance you're using, rest for maybe 30 to 60 seconds, change, do the other arm, rest for 30 to 60 seconds, change back, work your way through three or four sets, and that's gonna be a decent program. And obviously it'll be the same if you're using cables. So that's the first exercise for the external rotators. The second exercise is gonna be for the muscles on the back of the shoulder blade. So for the muscles on the back of the shoulder blade, the way that we're gonna do this one is we're going to pull our shoulder blade back and then we're gonna raise out to the side. So that's actually a little bit too much resistance for me. So I'm gonna back away. I'm gonna pull my shoulder blade back and then raise out to the side at about 45 degrees. But when I'm doing this and I'm pulling my shoulder up, I'm really trying to keep my shoulder blade squeezed back. So I'm really thinking about a muscle in this area here. So that's the exercise. Shoulder blade back, pull it up and then try and control it back down. And as I lower it down, I'm still trying to keep my shoulder blade pulled back. You might find that you lose it. So each time I might have to squeeze, I'm controlling it down. And then maybe I have to reset, pull my shoulder blade back and squeeze up. And again, we're gonna be going for the same thing. Powerfully up, slowly down for maybe four or five seconds to strengthen the eccentric portion of the movement. But that's the drill. And the same sort of rep range that we've just discussed is gonna apply here as well. So between eight and 12 reps at that specific speed should be challenging for that number of reps. Do one side, rest and do the other side. Repeat until you finish the sets. You're not gonna do it if it hurts your elbow at the time. You're only gonna do what you can do without any pain. But I also want to remind you about the forces involved in tennis. We've got these weights progressions because your brain isn't going to not want to protect you if these muscles aren't really strong. So using really thin, flimsy bands that sometimes they give out physio and hoping that that's going to do the job isn't the case. You need to progressively increase the amount of strength and resistance over time so that then your body can handle the forces that you're throwing at it. For our second variation of these exercises, we're gonna be using a dumbbell. Now you might need a slightly different weight for each of the exercises, but that's something that you'll have to test out. Here, I've got a three pound weight. It's gonna be much too light for me, but depending on where you're starting from, this might be a good area to start in. And for some people, you might need to go even lighter still. We're gonna start with the external rotators. Again, I'm just bending my leg as you can see. And then what I'm gonna be doing is slowly lowering the dumbbell for a count of again, four or five seconds until I can't go any further. If I go any further than this, my shoulder blade is gonna lift up because I haven't got any more range of motion. Potentially, you might be able to go further or you might not be able to go as far depending on your shoulder range of motion. But I'm gonna slowly lower it down. And again, I'm gonna come up quite quickly. So this is what the exercise looks like. Four to five seconds down, squeeze up, four to five seconds down. And again, we're thinking of that same sort of rep range. Between eight and 12 reps at that speed, choosing a weight that's gonna challenge you between three and four sets 
is going to be good. Uh, again, we're only going to do it if we can without pain. So if when I do this, my elbow hurts, I'm going to skip this one for now. Just focus on the other arm and all the other exercises that I can do without pain. So that's going to be the second variation for our external rotators. As you lower it down, start out nice and slow, be nice and sensible, because this is a precarious position potentially to be in, but it's also a really important position because this is kind of what happens when you hit your forehand, when you're hitting your serve. So it's a really good range of motion to become strong in. So that is our external rotator. We're now going to look at our scapular retractor, the muscle on the back of the shoulder blade. So there's a few different ways that we could set up for this one. I'm just going to be leaning on the bench in this position. I'm going to pull my shoulder blade back and then I'm going to raise my shoulder up to about 45 degrees. So again, I'm pulling the shoulder blade, <laughs> shoulder blade back, trying to hold that in position and then raising up. And I can manipulate this a little bit by leaning at different angles. So maybe if I go down there, I can change the strength curve a little bit or change whereabouts within the range of motion that I feel it, but we're going to be thinking the same. So shoulder back, lift up quickly, lower down for around four or five seconds. Now, ideally, you should be able to get up to, you know, maybe around 10% of your body weight for each of these drills. So for me, as a 200 pound-ish, ish, person i'm going to be thinking about 20 pounds for that sort of rep range obviously if you've got a lot of excess body fat that might not apply but these are muscles that we do want to get really strong so thinking about three to four sets resting 30 to 60 seconds changing arm and repeating and in terms of a workout if you do the forearm exercises both sides four different sets and then do the shoulder exercises both sides three or four sets uh, so just one, either the banded variation or the dumbbell variation, that's going to make a pretty good strength workout for most tennis players to help reduce tennis elbow pain and to kind of prevent against future pain. Okay, so that's a nice little program that you can get started with. And for a lot of you, that's going to be enough to get rid of your tennis elbow pain and to help prevent against future issues. Obviously, there are, num there are a number of potential things that can be going on. So if you would like to dive in deeper and learn more about different things that you can try, I've got a web class that I originally made for shoulder pain, but because the nerves that go to our forearm come through our shoulder, it's going to show you how to work on some key nerves. It's going to show you how to mobilize certain joints, and it's going to explain concepts to you that you might find really helpful. So I'll place a link down in the description, and I'll place a link up there so you can check that out if you want to. I also want to let you know about another class in case you are interested in improving your performance because I use brain-based training to help tennis players both with injuries but also the performance and one of the big reasons that most players struggle to raise their level is because their visual system doesn't function well enough so they can't read where the ball's going quickly enough so they can't start the swing at the right time and they aren't able to track the ball onto the strings so there's lots of cool things that you can do with brain-based training to improve your performance so I'll place a link to a web class that you might enjoy that will also be in the description and that will also be there if you've got any questions based on the stuff that i've gone over today uh, about programming or how to implement things just leave me a comment down below and i'll get back to you as quick as i can otherwise i really hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it and i'll see you next time